Good evening and welcome to the Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting June 27th, 2018 at 705 in the municipal offices here in Deerfield. Uh, would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, just so everyone knows, this uh, meeting is being televised and recorded. I've been asked to introduce everyone. Uh, my name is Kip Camosa. Uh, to my left is Carolyn Ness. To my right is Trevor McDaniels, Wendy Foxman, and Diana Schindler. That? Has everyone had a chance to review the minutes? No. No? But go ahead. They're hot off the press. They're hot off the press. <laughs> I, I have a, we can, can, we can do it. All right, sure. Yeah. All right, we'll push that right. off. Great. Right. Okay. Our first hearing uh, this evening is going to be with Joe and others. Uh, Joe Hart, 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 Joe H
So anytime you're out coming on the property, if it's the cultivation, for instance, by the time you arrive to that property, you're on camera. <clears throat> as soon as, it doesn't matter where you are, you'll be on camera. Okay. And typically we'll like to have five cameras as soon as you hit the property. And then as you come into the facility, it'll be five, five cameras. But we have secure areas. You just can't walk into the building. Right. So the building will be ultimately secured from, certainly from the ex exterior of the building, but as you walk in the main entrance, there would be more of a lobby there. And that lobby would be, you have to sign in. <clears throat> and the way it works is, you come in, that's a secure door. So you can't just walk in that door. You have to be let into that door. The property itself would have some kind of secure fencing on it with cameras, and you have to be let into that property. You just can't drive in on the property. So there's, there's secured checkpoints, if you will. And then when you come into the lobby, <clears throat> you have to sign in. And if you're a visitor, you have to state who you are, and you have to give um, ID. You have to, just to get past that. And then, then you're let in with a manager that, that is guiding you. You're not allowed to walk on your own. And then, then so you're, you're, you're taking through the facility and you can see the different operations and the different levels. And then when that's said and done and you're completed that tour, then you sign out and you, you are escorted out. Yeah. And so that's just the typical uh, of a cultivation. The dispensary is relatively the same. The dispensary is the same thing where if you come on the property, <clears throat> cameras will be on you 24-7. And I say this because a lot of times the police department has contacted us for video uh, feed mm -hmm. for a, maybe a robbery or something that happened nearby, yep. and they wanted to see if they can pick up a car that's driving by. So um, same thing. You come into a secure area, and that area is just a small lobby. And then um, so if you're buying um, medicine, you come in to where, think about it like a bank you go to and there's someone there to receive your information. They go on the computer and they log you in. So if you have a patient card, that has to match what's in the Massachusetts uh, department, that you cannot just walk in and say, I am a patient. You have to prove you're a patient. And then once we do that, we take your information. Now, every one of our dispensaries has what is called a greeter. And a greeter is just nothing more than someone meets you at the door, and then they ask you, simple question, have you been here before? And if the answer is yes, you go directly to the window. If you haven't, we will not let you go to the window. We actually do a side consultation with you in a secured area that is just for our education. <clears throat> so we say, what is your purpose? What is your reason? Why are you here? And if you have pain, inflammation, glaucoma, whatever the, the reason being, we, then we bring in someone who's trained and we give you suggestions on what, what would work for you. It could be a topical, it could be a cream, it could be a gel, it could be an edible, it could be various things that would get, get to the root of your problem. And then we, the dispensary itself is in a highly secured area. So again, it's, there's checkpoints. To get in the door, you have to be let in. That's in the lobby, and in the lobby is nothing. All that is is just, we want to know who you are. And once we check in that you're eligible, then you have to be let in by a manager into what is called a secured area. That secured area is where the product is. Now, <clears throat> what we have on our shelves is product, but they're samples. You cannot, most of like all the edibles, they're, they're, they're actually fake. Right. I mean, they're not there because we wouldn't want someone to, and it's all in glass case, so you can't yeah. touch this, but even what's in the glass case is fake. Uh, what's behind the counter is what's real, and then what we do is we, we um, if you, you take your order, they weigh it out, they, they charge you, and they put it in a bag with a receipt, just like if you went to a drugstore, and you get your receipt that's stapled. And it's as close to a, a CVS or a drugstore as you can be. When you leave, you have to leave the property. You are not allowed to stay on the property. You're not allowed to open that bag on the property. You have to drive off with the bag closed. Can I, can I ask you a question? This sounds a lot like a, a, you know, a medical uh, dispensary. Have you ever, do you have any intent in doing um, recreational retail sales? So the, the way I need to answer this is, if everybody in my, in my area is, is medical, I'll stay medical. I have no problem with that. But if I'm in a medical and, and my competitor is, is adult use, 
I'd like to have a conversation about it. Mm -hmm. When you speak about these cameras all over, the, are you talking about both your medical dispensary as well as the cultivation areas? Yes. Are these going to be night vision cameras, or will the properties be lit? Oh, the properties will be lit, but there'll be, there'll, there'll be night vision, so you can pick it up. You can pick up the movement. Okay. But it, it'll be both. I was just curious if it would have been... No, no, no. Our, our parking lots are highly uh, lit up. Okay. Um, so, I, I just went through this just now. So, um, is this... Um, not having done this before, is, does this, is this your letter of intent or is it just information? No, the letter of intent okay. was sent in the other day um, okay. from our corporate office. Um, I believe it was sent to... Nothing here yet. Maybe it was sent, but it wasn't received. <laughs> Did not get anything. Otherwise, we would have had that for the board. I, I, I'm, I'm certain it was sent to your email. I, I'll check my email, but it was sent. It was sent. Well, if I so, could walk, I'd go check my email. But I, I mean, I, I, but I'll, I could go in my sent box. It was sent. Okay. I'll, okay. I'll well, just um, did the police chief get it? Because that was also required. Okay. So just make okay. sure that you um, submit the letter of intent to Wendy officially, and and then to John Pachorik, our chief police, because that's the required. Um, so I'm just. You know, I, we haven't done this before, so I just want to make sure we don't miss anything. Um, so your outreach meeting, you had that community meeting at the Polish Club. Um, do you have, um, one of the requirements is that um, a notice be published in the Greenfield Recorder. Did you have, do you have that packet where the, you had the ad? So the, all of that, what I did with the Polish Club was really, I brought a doctor in. So right. the a advertising that we did from there, we did uh, <clears throat> we did local, we did flyers, and we did an announcement on the radio. Okay. And I can, if you need, I can bundle all of that. But that po we filled the we pretty much filled that Polish club with uh, the for our doctor that came in. Right. right. So Was it, it wasn't really. I don't, I don't think, think that was that wasn't an outreach meeting yet. No. Um, now I understand that there might be some differences because I think the police chief and I, who I have spoken with, <clears throat> we would. Probably go to some schools and give some high-level education, or right. give right. some, um, and that's. I'm ready to do that. Okay. Um, well, the problem is the kids are on summer va vacation right now. So, um, why don't you bundle up what you have done um, for the Polish Club <coughs> presentation and the announcements and stuff, and what you intend to do for the schools for the fall because um, there's not really a venue um, right now um, that would I that I think that would fulfill this and then um, Mike I just had a question why Joe um, do you think that harvest is um, qualified or your company Sun Mass Inc is qualified for meeting our um, outreach for our kids programs and schools and stuff um, I mean, that's really, for me, is my biggest concern is that we have a good program in the schools. So if you could tell me a little bit about what you do in other states and why you think your company would be successful doing this. Um, yes, and thank you for asking that question, actually. So let me just give a little history. <clears throat> it was not required when, when the cannabis industry opened up nationally in different states five, ten years ago. It wasn't required. We actually started to do it on our own because we wanted to give education to the public. So we actually created our own public outreach. And we do this, the community outreach we offer, <clears throat> it's always free. And so we started, and it really is the brainchild, on, so I don't want to take credit, it's the brainchild of our CEO, Steve White. Steve White wanted to give back to the community in multiple ways. <clears throat> so the community outreach that we, did, we initiated, which we incorporate in every city, every state, wherever we're located, is the following. We give free seminars at our location of the dispensary. And we give them depending on how many people will show up. Certainly monthly, but we do it in major cities that we'll do weekly. And the, 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 it's, it's information about what is cannabis. How does this help you? What are your diseases or concerns? 
you know, and, and I'm going to go sidebar here for a second. The biggest growth population numbers right now is between 50 and 90 years old because of pain and inflammation. The amount of people that are coming to our dispensaries now at, the, at that age bracket and understanding how do I deal with my pain and inflammation and the number of people that are new patients coming in is twice as much as a, the 30-year bracket. So we offer that. And we will continue to offer that because people don't know, and we don't want to do that. So we implemented a couple of things. We have, a, we have a compliance department, which most smaller companies do not. They can't afford it. And the only reason why we can is we're big enough and we can put that cost in the overall. And our compliance department is we offer these because we want to be compliant with every city. And if you have a rule and regulation with that, that's easy to match it. But we go out into the schools, which we have. We've, typically, it's the high schools that people want to go to. The elementaries are one thing, and we'll be happy to do that. But it's the junior high and high schools that seem to be the, where the community wants to focus. So we'll either do one of two things. We'll either bring a medical, medical practitioner in, because the parents would like to be part of that, too. We welcome it. So if the, if the community says, let's just have the students, we're happy to do that. But if the community says, can we have the students and parents, we welcome that. And then it's a little bit of, you need to understand what's happening out there in the community. Here's what we'll do to help you. There's never been a tragedy with cannabis, so no one's ever had an, an overdose in cannabis. So uh, but we, we go to the full extreme. We bring in uh, PowerPoints. We'll bring in uh, the, the physicians necessary to have the conversation. And so you have, would have no problem working with our resource officer and our current um, program that we have in the um, I'll schools. match what you need. Okay. That's, that's actually easy. Okay. Hmm. Um, I guess the, once we get the letter of intent, um, then um, you're moving forward with uh, your site plan review and then we would get the um, draft. I know, and I know you had forwarded some a draft host agreement before. So, um, we, I guess we sh well, when we get, do we have that? Um, well, we haven't reviewed it because Wendy didn't want us to um, review anybody until we had gotten a letter of intent. Okay, but I know I, I'm sure that you spoke with Lisa to review these anyways. Correct. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what you're asking me. To I'm asking you right. if this when we get... This is an informal <coughs> meeting. This right. is not, you know, a formal part of the process. Right. Prior. I'm just checking our zoning bylaws just to get clarification. What okay. I was looking for was uh, assurance that the attorney would look at it prior to us seeing it. Oh, yes. Okay. I mean, in, at your direction, of course. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, um, so uh, what's your timeline, Joe? Um, for going to the planning board, you, are you on the agenda uh, coming up? Well, I was trying to get on the uh, July 2nd agenda. I think it, it is, and I don't think I, I made it. Um, so there was a whole list of criteria that was requested, and then it was shortened to just w one item. Okay. Which I'm working on the other items, and I'll be happy. I could put that together in short order. Okay. I am aware that the school is out, and I know that's a little bit of. I'm not sure. How to, but we can figure that out um, to be to do the, the give the education and the outreach to the schools. Um, but everything else I could put together. Yes, why don't you put together everything else in a packet for us, and um, so we have it on you know in yeah. on record. And then um, if you reach out to John, um, our police chief, and work with. Um, Brian, our resource officer, in some kind of schedule. I think, I think we so, would be okay with that. Well, why don't I, Why don't I just read this so we have this? Um, so this is guidance for uh, prospective marijuana establishments in Deerfield. In order for the select board to consider executing a final host agreement and a uh, letter of support to a uh, prospective marijuana establishment licensee. The following tasks must be completed. One, submission of an, of an initial letter of intent to the select board that identifies the type of license being sought, uh, project location, project principles, summary of a business plan, and description of, of proponents' experience developing similar projects. Copies of the letter shall be sent to the police department. The select board may invite the proponent to a subsequent regular meeting in order to become familiar with the project. 
Which we have done, which yeah. we're doing. Two, applicant must have uh, held a community outreach meeting in accordance with the Massachusetts Cannabis Control Regulations. The meeting sh uh, notice shall be published in the Greenfield Recorder. The event should uh, be recorded and broadcast by FCAT. The applicant must make their own arrangements for newspaper notice and with FCAT for recording and broadcasting. The Frontier Regional School District and the Franklin County Technical School shall be notified in addition to the entities required by the CCC regulations. Three, the applicant must have received both zoning, special permits, and site plan approval from the special permit granting authority, which is the planning board. For uh, subsequent to completion of the above tax, the applicant must submit to the select board a package containing the following. A, a synopsis of the community outreach meeting, content, handouts, uh, attendance, um, and notice from the newspaper. Copy of the special permit, site plan review, record of vote. Copy of license, draft, application of intent and supporting documents. Uh, proposed draft host agreement, community host agreement. Um, the select board reserves the right to withhold support of the siting of the facility or re refuse to execute a host agreement, community agreement that it deems is not in the best interest of the town. I think we modified this, Trevor, um, to say going through the process of site plan review and special permit. You mean concurrent with this? Yeah. 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 We had talked about that because um, it could be a while. Right. So. Do same track, same yeah. time frame. Yeah. Yep. So just because this is new, Wendy, I just want to make sure. So, and, and <coughs> Joe, so we have the letter of intent. We'll get that. Um, I have it here. I sent it on Sunday the 24th to Wendy and John at uh, 9.25 p.m. Okay. Well, Maybe you can, uh, can you resend it? You no, know, you know, Sunday. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I might have seen it. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, anyway, um, so just to make sure I understand that I'm not missing anything. So are you all set um, if, if we have this letter of intent to, how, 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 when you go to apply to the state, what do you need from us to get the state to start moving on your application? I need, I need, your, I need your approval because it needs to be approved locally mm -hmm. so then I can go to the state. Now, I'm already into the state talking to them on these earlier stages and so we, 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 we have our, our state uh, uh, entity put together we have our state application put together, but I need I need a couple steps here that we need to move forward on so I can complete it. What I was what I was informed on this letter that you have mm -hmm. there's there's four steps there, I believe. Yep. Just to complete the first step, and that's what I did. Now I was if that's the direction that was given to me is changed, I'll be happy to do follow whatever. Well, no, uh, no, it was that I, we were going to take this first step out of order or doing what they just said. I'm sorry, is it okay if I clarify yeah, go ahead, this? Please. That originally we weren't going to even entertain the letter of intent until you did these other steps. But the board wanted to hear, at least the majority of the board wanted to hear earlier rather than <clears throat> later. And so, as I explained to you in person, that you could come in and address step one and it's also done. move on these others. I also, just to add to what you just said, and also to uh, apply to the state you need to have had the community outreach meeting and I don't believe what you what was held here would satisfy that requirement. I don't think it's this. completed. No, yeah, that, so that, we, that, what we could we get that rolling. Is, no, no, it what wasn't finalized to, to the letter of the law that you want. I, just, I, I don't recognize that. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to limp over to my computer and see what I can do. But, but, I, but I, again, I, I, there was some directive that was given to me mm -hmm. and I was just following that in, in that's well, fine. we wanted, you, fine. We wanted okay. to start the process for you, or with you, um, and we because we haven't done this before, so we wanted to make sure we weren't holding you up. I, th I mean, that was my intention. Right. The, the only thing is that we should be very careful as to review um, whatever agreement that we get into, but not to sign it until the process is completed. Right, you know? right. right. But okay. we can... We can review it, right. and, and the consensus can be that it looks 
you know, fine. And then we'll just wait for you to finish the rest. So I think step one is let's just letter of intent. Um, I'll resend it. I think okay. Just to Wendy? Now. Yeah. And I did send it to Wendy and John. That's fine. Yeah. Yep. And that's so it sounds like that's, that's done. what's required by law. Yep. And we got that done. So I can do that in the next 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. Right. Well, she'll either find it or whatever, I but would, that's fine. And then step two is to do an outreach. Is to finish the outreach part. With, uh, you know, an ad in the Greenfield Recorder and then, you know, get in touch with FCAT and uh, ho ho host an outreach. Correct. But Joe, let me ask you a I'm question. What you did do yes. at the Polish Club, I attended that. Is that what you consider your outreach? I know it wasn't formal. No, no, no. Properly, you know, that was, uh, that was, was purely kind of an, an education. Yeah. That was just from an educational standpoint of what is this? You know, mm -hmm. I, I think that because sometimes we, we, we're not sure we might create some ideas about it. That's all it was. It was okay. nothing okay. more than that. Okay. Right. Sounds good. So, um, if, yeah, if you could develop something with John and our resource officer, that would be... Um, so and what's John's last name? John Pachor. He's the our chief. police chief. Oh, the, yep. I'm sorry, the, the chief. The yep. chief. Yep. yep. And Brian Ravish is our resource officer. Yep. And um, we want to build on whatever you would like to do. I feel very strongly we want to build on his relationships that he's been building Got for it? the last couple of years in the when, schools. So, I think Wendy has it. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Um, and then, That's... well, anytime you want to get back so, on your agenda. I just so, wanted to clarify one more thing about please. the retail versus medical. So your intent is just to do a medical out, a medical dispensary and not a retail? No, my intent is to do the medical first to get get started. Gotcha. If everybody that is my local competitor. Which medical, there will be. I'm happy. No, there'll be I'll there'll be stay. retail. If there are some people that are that are adult use, yes, and they're my competitor, there will be. I I, I have to have a conversation about it. And the reason is is when would your conversation I won't be able to start? compete with them. Well, that's what I'm saying. I, I think, would go. I, think you I would, would literally go out of business. Um, that my my understanding is that you're gonna you're gonna have adult use retail competitors immediately. Immediately. So I wouldn't plan on just, I mean, just a hint for you. I, 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 I understood. Sorry. Here, here's, this is what I'm coming up across. I'm going to speak candid here. Yeah. Please. People are, are afraid, or there, there are some un questions between medical and adult use. Right. So number one, to be clear, the medicine, the product, they're identical. There's yep. no difference. Yep. Just so we, we, I don't know if people will recognize it, but there's no difference. The only difference is, is one, you need to go get a, a doctor's okay versus right. not. Right. That's the difference. You cannot buy as much as you want. You're limited. You're only allowed one ounce. Yep. In, a, in a medical, you're allowed 10 ounces every uh, six weeks. Yep. So there, there's differences on how they handle this. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I will follow. Um, but, you know, the intent is, I think, the state is, is voted for it. The state has passed for it. Yes. Overwhelmingly. Absolutely. And so there's, there's because it's the VIT citizens, there, there's a desire to have that. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, we just, um, I think our concern is that, you know, um, yep. I mean, we're happy to do work with you, you know, assuming that we come to some agreement that, um, and so I don't, we don't want to limit you by just, you know, okaying the medical and not moving on with the retail. Well, I appreciate that. You know, I want to be very candid and open, um, and I think to have an open dialogue is, is best for both. Okay, that's fine. So you'll Good. just let us know when you want to, um, if you change your mind from medical to... Well, it's not both. that I'm changing my mind on it. It's just you, you have to go through a series of processes. And right now the state wants you to go through medical first, and then into okay. when the time is right. Right now, they're not even allowing the, the, the that's a little bit on, on the pause I button. I know. So We're not really worried about that. Well, right. Does the medical marijuana have to go through the same laboratory same testing that the retail yes. does? And yes. they don't have a lab selected yet, so. Well, that's, and, and be that as it may, that's yeah. only a matter of time. And the reason that is, is 
it's commerce and it's business, right? Mm -hmm. So someone's going to find and, and see this. There are companies that are opening up across the country right now that specialize in this. Right. So they're just going from town to town and they're seeing the, the ripe opportunity and they're coming in. They're all professional. These are all PhD chemists. So, you know, you have the right source. They'll be here. Okay, and you need you. a third party. You can't have it done well, in-house. I understand. Right. Can I just okay. apologize? I didn't see it, and it did come in. So I've distributed I've extra copies if any of the public would like to see the letter of right. intent. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Thank you, Joe. Okay. I'll, I will certainly be in touch, but I appreciate your time. Yeah, oh, yeah. Thank, thank you very much. Um, thank do you, you want so. um, a list? I think I have this not marked up. Here, do you have this list? Um, this guidance from us? I do. Okay. Oh, okay. Yes, I do. Okay. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Joe, for coming in. Next on our agenda, it's uh, 735. We have attorney Gary Gruber and Chet and Ann Ostrowski, if you guys would like to step forward. I did. Yeah. I did. I just wanted to disclose that uh, Attorney Gruber and I have a professional relationship, so I want to recuse myself from any discussions that are here tonight, okay? You beat me to the punch. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't rehearse that either. I'm Gary Gruber, and I represent Jed Ostrowski Jr. And um, this is sort of like the chicken beef. Does the chicken come before the egg or vice versa? Um, this is the first step in a process of having a solar project approved. And what we're asking is for seven and a half acres uh, that is identified as parcel ID 142-20. That's uh, 147. Yep. Uh, and parcel ID 142-22 be removed from 61A. Looking at this project, I believe that it is a win, 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 win all around for everybody. Uh, first, for the town of Deerfield, you're going to have increased revenue um, from this project. For my client, Mr. Ostrowski, as a farmer who is aging, it's going to create a steady stream of income. He doesn't have to worry about Mother Nature, whether or not his fields are going to be flooded or uh, anything like that. For Hexagon uh, Solar, what they have is a project of one of many in the Commonwealth, and it'll definitely be a profit center. And most importantly, for the citizens of not only Deerfield, but the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, this two megawatt project will create electricity for approximately 300 homes, reducing the carbon footprint. Um, for this commonwealth. Um, it's a tedious process. Uh, this is step one. So like I said, um, I'd like to reserve the right in the event that the planning board for any reason denies the site plan review that we could withdraw this application. Um, I don't foresee that happening, but um, we had to start someplace and this is where we're starting. So you're, so you're asking for a waiver of a right of first refusal to purchase this property. Right, but if the project doesn't go through, you want I would to withdraw it, and I'd like to see this property remain okay. in 61A. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I'm, I'm, okay uh, with, I'm okay with that, I think. But you have to, probably you would have to come back and request it to be put back in 61. That would be no okay. problem. I don't foresee this project stalling. Uh, but as a lawyer, you always got to play what if. Can, can you tell me just a little bit where, where it is? It's sure. Um, this is Scott map. Reamer of yeah. Hexagon. Hey, hey, Be happy to speak to that. Thank you. Good evening, guys. My name is Scott Reamer. I, uh, I'm based in Charlottesville, Virginia, where Hexagon works. But uh, hi, Wendy. Nice to finally meet yeah, you for the face of the name. Um, um, we have a, a portfolio of projects across the state that we're uh, working underneath what's called the SMART program, the Solar Massachusetts Renewable Target. It's okay. a little different than the previous five megawatt project that you guys uh, had approved. This one is the power will be sold directly to Eversource West. Um, they'll purchase it. The project is located off of Setright Road, uh, a little bit east of it. So, you know, 91 runs right yep. here. 
you have a tree buffer right uh, yep. next to it, and then right directly uh, abutting that tree buffer, you know, with the appropriate buffers from the wetlands and everything, is where the project would be located. There are no, no nearby residences. Um, it's currently farmed. Uh, Mr. Ostrowski here is the, uh, the landowner. And so all, all we're requesting right now is that the, uh, you guys uh, would uh, not exercise the right of first refusal so that we can go ahead with some confidence to the planning board and, and request a site plan review. And these are the fields that are kind of down off of the drag, well, we call yeah, it the drag have, strip, but it's, like to see, I, I see a, the map here now. Yeah, think, okay, good. So you don't be, D, yeah, think, you're not cutting down any trees or anything, you're just using those open fields that are back there right mm -hmm, now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what's kind of cool to keep in mind with this too is, you know, this is a, it's a 25 to 35 year lifespan on this project. Uh, we don't foresee forever tying up this property and removing it from any sort of agricultural production. It's, it's Can a always be time. used. And, yeah. and once that's over, you know, it'll, it will be up to Mr. Ostrowski or whoever uh, owns the land at that point to uh, decide whether they'd want to renew a lease or, or gotcha. put it back into farming. Or, so or, this isn't a permanent change. Yep. Can I nope. ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> Have you had any experience with te pending, you know, um, releasing it pending the approvals and all of that before? Because I'm not yeah. used okay, to honestly, that. Honestly, truly, if you yeah. sign the waiver today, <laughs> yeah, yes, I will hold it in escrow. <laughs> and until the planning board gives the site approval, nothing will be recorded. We still have to work with the assessors mm -hmm. to That's, pay the rollback yeah. taxes and have okay. the property reclassified. That like I good. said, you have to start someplace. Yeah, yeah. someplace. And yeah. it's like, you know, a juggling act. I don't yeah. know yeah. how else to I'm, describe it. Yeah, I just don't know. Okay, so I'll, I'll let the assessors know that. That would yeah. yeah. I'm not sure I what you... I think there's a meeting with the planning board on Monday, a preliminary meeting. Yeah, yeah we'll have Just a to have a site review right. like and yep. preliminary discussion. Gotcha. And hopefully shortly thereafter, it could go before the board for a vote. Okay. okay. Uh, I, the I, hope is that this whole project will be approved by... Uh, well, we're, hoping, we're hoping that, you know, we'll have a formal submission in about a couple of weeks so that yep. by the planning board's um, early August meeting, we can have the formal conversation. We're hoping for okay. approval at that point. Uh, we have submitted an interconnection request. We expect that to be complete within a month or two. And so we could see, we could see construction even conceivably by the end of the year. But, um, you know, it, it takes a few hoops to jump through, for sure. Well, I know, uh, just curious question, like, uh, how fast does Eversource hook up to you? Because we've had, uh, it took forever, right? I mean, well, we Eversource have. is an <laughs> right? entity unto themselves. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, figure just, out a way to get them to move. It, 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 it's, it's, all it's, about, it's yeah. all about whether you post 100% of the initial deposit, and if you do that, they'll connect to you within three to six months, something like that. And gotcha. if you want to space out your uh, your interconnection I mean, costs, I know then, the uh, digester took a while, the other one took a while. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I don't know how there this were other is any factors different. at play. It wasn't but, just yeah, the, I got that. Well, but. and you know, we have a site out in Lanesboro that we're looking at that could yep. conceivably be up to three or four years before we can interconnect because yep. of substation upgrades. and. It can be a little bit of a crazy situation. I will speak just, you know, in uh, the vein of staying candid with everything. Um, we are trying to hurry in some ways from the permitting process to reserve a spot in the smart queue. Yep. Um, so that we, we reserve a, a favorable incentive rate. And so that's right. part of why we're trying to move a little bit quickly. And, you know, yep. as uh, Mr. Gruber referenced, there's, there's a lot of different pieces here. And this was the first, and we thought be really nice to be able to, to move forward with uh, knowing that there's not going to be a right of first refusal exercised. Right. Right. Yeah, well, I make a motion that um, we waive the uh, right of first refusal. Do you want it pending the approval of the permits? Yes. How, what language would you like that would satisfy what you're asking for? That would be fine, pending uh, site approval by the planning board. Fine. fine. I don't can, think you can do that. Can, I don't, I mean, you can't make it you we just we just do it, and then if you don't file it, right, it, nothing happens. I can don't this think land ever go back into. So yes, they, so he, he in can, thirty-five but, years, you pull these off of here, and yeah. then a new application they, for they, sixty-one. He just, gotcha. he just has to reapply for sixty-one. Right, gotcha, or whatever so it is back then. If if that. if we're waiving our first right, we vote that, and they decide not to go forward, or they or ever source never. It does doesn't up. happen. Yeah. Right. Right. And then they then it's. Because it was never filed, it's still in 61A. And if you choose at a later date to go back into 61A, you just have to reapply to the. Mm -hmm. to the right. 
May, can I ask a question? Thirty related? years, I guarantee you, you won't see me here. Well, there was there was <laughs> some discussion <laughs> when you came in talking about continuing agricultural use under the panels. What's the mm -hmm. status of that? That's something we're still exploring. It, it makes things a little bit more complicated. So we're, we're actually really interested in it across the state. Um, and in some ways, uh, Mr. Ostrowski's site would be an ideal location to try it. Beautiful but land. It, yeah, it's, it's great. It's, it's an experimental approach. It's quite expensive to, to vault these panels up and space them and you lose some efficiency. Mm -hmm. And the main thing that we would need on that is, is a farmer. We need somebody who would be willing to harvest hay or, or run sheep or goats or something under there. And there's some irrigation. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> there's some irrigation issues um, with the site. Our, as I say, we're still exploring it. And I, I, my understanding, based on our environmental consultant who actually worked with, uh, with you guys on the previous project as well, SWCA, is that the special permit should hopefully allow, since the footprint would remain the same, should allow for a, an agricultural shift later on. Mm -hmm. So actually because of the state incentive, it, it's financially to our advantage to, to do the agricultural approach. So it, it would be great. Um, we have some pending uh, site des or pending um, racking system designs that we're, we're looking at, but yeah. I, I want to move forward so we can reserve a spot in the queue as soon as possible right. And, right. and sort that out as the details become clear. Sounds good. But I, I would love I would love to do that, and I think it would be really cool for Deerfield to, to be on the map with that. Yeah. We would absolutely support that. I just want to make sure that you are aware that we would really try very hard to work with you. Excellent. Um, we'd pressure er Eversource more for you. <laughs> if yeah, you were, thanks. If That'll work. you took on that additional cost. Okay. Well, Not we, that it would really do very much. You, all right, yeah. Don't sign Wendy. And up if you that. know, if you know a farmer who <laughs> would be interested in in working underneath <laughs> yes. in any of your relationships, please pass them along. And I'm going to speak with a uh, Chet's uh, current current tenant farmer there, and and make sure we can sort it out or see about it. I'm sorry, I interrupted. Go ahead. So I'll second that motion. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, and one abstention. It's or, one of the most yeah, beautiful uh, chunks of land. He's, I he's just recused. love that area. You should go on the record. Uh, you should say that on the record so we have that in the minutes that you recused yourself. He did. He did. Oh, I, oh he did. Oh, was I yep. hobbling around? Okay. I'm sure Diana got it. Yep. Uh, well, thank you. Um, thank, okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I look forward to uh, filling you in, and I'll see you again as we negotiate the pilot rate uh, down okay. the road, which you guys have some experience with already. Yep. So uh, we'll be in we'll be in more conversation. It's a pleasure Perfect. to meet you all. Yeah, nice yep. to meet you too. Thank Thanks you. for coming have in. Have a nice evening. Take care. Good to see you. Thank you. Bye bye. One for Brenda and one for. Okay, moving on. Um, purchase and sale is what I We have a purchase and sale agreement with uh, Eric Hagopian from the Dumont uh, Company for Parcel C at the Oxford site. I make a motion that we um, approve that. Second. Any further discussion? Nope. nope. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I didn't see it. I didn't see a whole bunch of it's what here. we need to sign? sign? No, you want to sign everything at the end of the oh, meeting and just Oh, that's at the end. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Let's yeah, just we'll do it so at the end. Hang on a second. Let me just. Okay. Um, so. Okay. Yeah. Sign. Okay. Uh, Colonial Power Consultant Contract for Municipal Aggregation. Um, again, my what? only question was I, I, I felt uncomfortable um, voting yes. If this is an endorsement, but if this is just a step that is recommended by the Energy Committee, I'm okay with that. Diana, can you enlighten us? Sure. <clears throat> so I don't, I don't know if the Energy Committee's letter actually references the town meeting vote, and I don't know the exact date of it. I'm sorry, I don't. But I vaguely ago, remember. Within the last year, couple years, you've had a town meeting vote um, where your citizens voted to go into a program called municipal aggregation. So basically it works like a third party energy supply contract for all of your residents together. And once there's a public process, um, once you would sign the agreement, the consultants would um, start a public notice period where you put information on your website and you do a, um, you'll, you'll post it in your meeting and you'll do some a little bit of public outreach. Um, and then you have to go through DOER with this, the Department of Energy Resources. You have to have a hearing through them, and then you have to have a hearing through DPU. So the whole process, once you sign the consultant agreement, still takes 
takes about eight months, and part of it is a public process. Once the public process starts and the, and the public is informed of it, um, once the aggregation piece starts, the public is mailed a card in the mail and told that, this, that they're going to be part of a municipal aggregation unless they opt out. And they have a period of time at that point, 30 days, to opt out. Otherwise, they are signed up for this third-party energy contract. They're pulled off of Eversource and put into this. Um, if at any time they want to go back to Eversource, they can. You can move back at any time. Um, but all of those details would, would be um, put forth to the public during your public process, which is, this is just the first step of that. This isn't going right to aggregation. This is just to start the public so, process. So we have plenty of time to find out what the downsides are, what, um, whether we really want to pursue this finally, you know, all that kind of stuff. Is it, are the savings worth it? You know, what are we getting ourselves? Well, to? I'm not sure. I mean, I think if you have some of those questions, you could have the consultant come in and talk a little bit more about the program. I don't. Should you're we do not that gonna. Before? I, I would. I'd rather do it because I, I really feel a little blindsided that I. I mean, it's not what I thought okay. it was at all. You yeah. know, and, and that, sure. that's okay. I think yeah. it could be a good idea, mm -hmm. uh, but I'd like to know more of the details. You know, um, can, we, can sure. we put it off for two weeks? Oh, sure. Yeah, there's no... Is that, that going to be a negative for anything? I, I no. don't think we had a date for signing this. No. Because okay. Okay. some towns have to go to town meeting still right. okay. to get okay. approval, so, so they're pulling it together. Could Can we, we get more information on this? Sure. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll try yeah, to schedule that, uh, that. that. Bob Armstrong from Conway, when I, I, was, out at the, yes. when I was out at the um, convention, was talking about aggregation, and he's trying to push us, you know, the local towns yes. for that, right. and he thinks it's a good idea, but... But let's, yeah, just to get educated a little bit more. Night. Let's yeah. do that. Other yeah. than the okay. opt opt out, in, you know, being right. a, well, of I can't see yeah. it. Well, negative, Trevor and I know. will talk to him tomorrow, and try to get more information because I I'm I'm not really sure that I'm really comfortable Did starting that? this without more information. Yeah, we can mm -hmm. I mean, sure. I, I can, if it, it's going to save people money, I don't think that there's going to be an issue, but I. I think that there's going to be a lot of people in town who are going to say, what's going on? Question. Where's my electric bill? Right. I didn't sign up for this. And then, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to hear the heat. Well, they, like, well, well, they who, still get an electric bill from Eversource. Oh. Nothing changes, but on the electric bill, it would have the identification of the person, uh, the third party supply. Oh, some yeah. people yeah. already have third party supply yeah. com contracts sure. that they've got on their yeah. own. So it's some Yeah, but I've heard that. some nightmares from those third parties. So I just mm -hmm. want to make sure. I mean, if Bob. I mean, I, I know Bob and he's really put a well, lot of work into it. so yeah. and uh, but I I would rather talk to him about yeah, it. Yeah, we'll do that. Sure, we'll do yeah. that. That sounds okay. good. So you want it on your next agenda? Yes. Yes. As soon as we can get it, someone yep. to come. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, we'll talk to Bob tomorrow, and and if we have any questions that we want to. We'll let you know if we have more okay. questions that we would like to And I like think David um, Gilbert Keith gave you a letter, yeah. and I'm sure the yeah. Energy the Committee folks yep. would also be happy to talk yeah. to you because yeah. they've nice been exploring this for Anybody about a year. Um, I don't know for we, sure. We have representatives let's find to out that what no, questions we might have. And then oh, we can, yes, there are. I would love David, to have yes, the yes, David and Emma come into it. I mean, it's just good to meet with them as well, but to see what they're up to this year, but to talk about this important issue. Yes, so I just think we could get them on the agenda. Yeah, and two, you appointed both, I believe, David Gilbert Keith and Steve Iper to the this regional group that was putting this together. Okay, so, good. So yes. they're to, quite informed about this. So. We'd love to have them come in. It's just, I, I'm not caught up. Yeah. So it's my, I, I mean, I'm taking responsibility for not being informed. Well, okay. It's, I, I think it's just something that we, we just need to hear from the people that deal with it. So it's fine. Yeah, yeah. as soon as you could arrange for them to come in for our next meeting, that would be great. Okay. Uh, next on our agenda is the C. AI contract for the GIS <laughs> maintenance service, and I have no idea what that's. Uh, that's you signed that last but. year. This was this. Um, this is the contract for the um, assessor stuff. The assessor. Well, I knew it was for the assessor's maps, but I don't know what the GIS and stands for. You, but that's we, okay. We uh, um, geographic informational systems. Isn't that what it is? Yes. This is this is just a continuation of what we've, yeah, we've already been. approved. So make a motion to approve yep. the contract for the time period of 824-2018 through 823-2019. I'll second that. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. 
Okay. Next, we have two one-day liquor licenses, the Franklin Land Trust on August 17th and 18th on Mill Village Road. I make a motion that we approve the 17th and 18th um, for the Franklin Land Trust for their, um, what is it, their road? Randonee. Yeah. <laughs> Dirt Road Randonee. Yeah. And do you want to waive the fee? It's a non Yeah, we usually yes. waive the fee. Second. Any more discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Where, where on Mill Village Road do they have that? They um, Yop's property. Yeah. On his the field. The field. <coughs> field. Just as oh. you go, you know where the willow trees are? Yep. And that little bridge? Yep. It's that field just before. They put oh. a tent up and, okay. and there, that kind of stuff, There's right? two different um, alcoholic, the reason why there are two, the two different uh, providers, and we have yeah, insurance certificates for them. Right. Right. Yep, I saw that. Okay, the next thing on our agenda is a request from the Frontier Regional School for the fiscal year 19 budget amendment for E&D funds of $20,000. No action required. So, they just announced it to us that they have. No, I got the letter. You have this. We yeah, get this letter it? almost every year. It's you know, oh. you have the Can right to it? remain silent, and it goes Im immediately into effect after 45 days. I believe their E and D funds are the equivalent of kind of free cash. And, it is. Yep. Um, I don't believe you've. Well, at least last year, I don't think you did anything. You know. To, Object or um, not, so. Do you know how much they have left over in their budget? Hmm. After, you know, what, what they have left in free cash or so their E&D? Yeah, I don't know what the balance is after this. Um, so I mean, I don't, I don't have a problem with it. No, uh, they're building security. So. Is that what they're using it for? Yeah, yes, that's what it, it yeah, says, it says for, for upgrades, upgrades for building security. security. So I'm, I'm good okay. with that. So, I mean, I don't have any problem with that because no. I think they're following the recommendations of the state police did All right. with them. Okay. We'll stay silent then. Right? So we won't okay. say Great. anything, but I, right. it was just, I don't know what they have in balance. Next on our agenda is a community compact IT grant, a new proposal. Yay. Let me see that. So just I'll give the background and then okay. you can run with yeah. it. Um, so as you know, we, um, under a prior administration, received a grant for $45,000 for an IT project that um, ended up not being something we could actually do. And we spent quite a bit we of did. time researching yep. options and um, still spent even more time looking at um, allowable options. And we've been working with the state IT department, um, uh, the Office of Technology Services and Security, and had an audit done by, through them, um, a service from a private company at no cost and together um, this is what's come out of it. Diana's put a lot of work into this and Thank working you. closely with them. Thank you, and Diana. And she is going to Thanks. take it from here. <laughs> so basically we had a um, sort of a scope that we had needed to come up with to spend the grant money. Yep. So this is just a request for quotes for the scope for the project work. Um, and it identifies a lot of technical information, but it basically identifies what we think are the things that need to be investigated as part of the workstations, the servers, the network, so that we can get a better performance and better security um, for the workstations, at least in the town hall. It does affect the police department and FCAT as well, uh, so we're working with them to make sure everything is integrated. Um, also, it asks to uh, consider a more global network for the town, mm -hmm. um, a town-wide network. Um, we're not asking them to uh, build a fiber network that the right. grant had, had uh, contemplated, but basically just to uh, suggest ways that we can be more connected through the fiber that already exists through broadband or uh, MBI. Mm -hmm. um, so that would all be. And then finally, we're hoping once all this is done, um, to keep those improvements going with a ongoing outsourced IT contract um, once we have a better, um, robust yeah, system. I did, I did have money in the budget for this upcoming year mm -hmm. for a network administrator, you know, having those services. So they, the party who we choose, you choose to uh, go forward with these, this specialized project may also be interested in staying on an ongoing basis once having right. become familiar with our operations. Right. So, right. Um, so. Through Homeland Security, um, the state police had, had done a um, presentation of what they were trying to do um, as like minimum security for municipalities mm -hmm. because of, you know, avoid all these ransom 
problems. Um, and um, I had volunteered Deerfield as a pilot, and um, but they, I don't think it was funded um, oh. through the state to do it. So um, I'm really glad that we're doing this, and I yeah. um, will contact that state police guy that I have this card and. Um, Please do. There's Make sure we um, are, are have like minimum levels or something. There, Maybe I can just have them review this. There's a serious issue with, um, you know, the hackers are, are attacking municipalities. They're stealing their data. I know. And you got to pay, I think there's a school committee somewhere that had to pay right. $10,000. Like $10, Lemonstrate. Yeah, yeah. Lemonstrate. Well, the to hospitals, get their money back. what we're happening, I've yeah. heard of back. three or right. four hospitals that yeah. in, our area, in our area it's dangerous. have had to. Um, pay ransom yeah. too. So it's really serious and that's why he was doing this presentation. They're trying to, to start this program to review everybody's stuff. And but I had the, volunteered us because I, I felt like we are not really up to date. D uh, mm -hmm. sh <laughs> Diana. Diana, uh, Diana went uh, to a <laughs> To a, a seminar recently. Well, I went to the small town administrators meeting and right. the, I went partly to meet with um, the gentleman from Mass IT who was going right. to be there to work on this. Well, that's who, yeah. um, that's but the during the, the yeah. meeting, they talked a lot about cybersecurity and that's a, yeah. that's a big issue that's the, coming out. Yeah, right and now. the state police so. are trying to coordinate so that yes. there's like a minimum level, you know. Of security and yeah. like firewalls yeah. and, and stuff <sighs> like that. Yeah. I get, and I get all these yeah. emails from them all the that time. That was a big was topic. Crazy. In fact, Maya this year is offering cybersecurity as part of our insurance free right. um, for this first year. I'm sure it'll cost in the right. future, but they yeah. are encouraging because um, municipalities yeah. have become yeah. more of a target. So um, we are, yeah. And it's, it's really not that. that they want your data. They want your money. They want yes. you to pay to right. get that data right. back. Yeah. So, so um, this will help. This? To, yeah, so I'll make a motion that we approve this. Second. Any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Right. Next uh, item on our agenda is a contract mm -hmm. extension for Diana Schindler. Oh, Diana. man. I'm pretty excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> that goes through what, 3030? Yeah, right. Does that mean we <laughs> you can never <laughs> leave? At some point, she's going to need to leave. <laughs> I don't think we can. Uh, didn't we get we permission to sign here? ten years or something? <laughs> I don't have anything in my packet. Right oh, it's just a one pager. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's oh, just it's that just that you've big? already done this yeah. twice we'll because okay. yeah. we went from thirty days Make to thirty days, to and this is longer. To extend the contract for Diane Schindler, <laughs> Diana Schindler. I, I I second that. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank well, you. thank you. you. <laughs> We're pretty excited. We're going to tag team the next one too. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> the, the next item on our agenda is the bylaw review and update project uh, general code proposal. I'm um, the only question I had here. I know, no, he actually first. left and I didn't think he was going to be here. Yeah. So um, I don't know if he spoke with you, Carolyn, about this at all. So Bruce, no, no. Um, I was just, yeah. that was my question. How does this inner. Um, it um, moves them far ahead of the game. Okay. <laughs> moves okay. them off a sort of a. Point of circle to okay. forward. I think it's a good idea. Um, okay, uh, and, and Bruce is okay with this. I, I think he. I think he'll hold the feet to the fire to make sure we get what we need. Okay. Well, right. then I move that we sign that. Oh, I was. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, well, there's. I, I was going to say, did didn't Bruce ask you about this? Yeah, we've gone back and yeah, forth today so. and yesterday, yeah. and yeah. Um, okay. I think we and, and Barbara. Uh, this is, you know, she's taken a so lot of initiative is, with this. She works right. closely with the code company. Yeah. And um, did you want yeah. to say more? Just that, that we are really excited because there, she had money in her budget this year, um, and that's why it got, you know, on the agenda tonight because it's such a, it'd be such a bolster forward with this project. So sure. the fact I mean, that she's got money in her budget yeah. is willing to put it toward this, that. This is the money she always has for code updates, but it's, yeah. It will be integrated into this. Um, right. Right. Carol, yeah. move that. Do you want to second? I'll second that. Uh, any yep. further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. That will be great. Yeah. Next That's item window. is the sewer abatements for Zabac, mm -hmm. Cary, Healy. Yeah, um, I, um, I have, you, I have, have, you have looked at. I have I, reviewed these, and we could discuss these a little bit. There are two that I'm okay moving forward with, um, I think which it, would be... Um, John and Mary Lou Zabeck and 
Joseph Carey because these were pretty straightforward, I and think, misreadings. There were, there were both uh, errors from the water department right. that were transferred and, to us. So. And they sent yes. a letter from the water department. So I'm, I feel pretty good just moving on those. Okay. Um, you, well, why don't we deal with these? Okay. And, um, Sounds do good. You want, do you want, can we do them both together? Just name them together? One motion? Sure. I mean, it's you fill out the paperwork, so okay. the motion's All right, fine. So. Um, we'll make a, so I make a motion to um, approve the abatements for um, John and Mary Lou Zabeck okay. and Joseph Carey um, for their sewer. With the amounts. And the amounts are, let me see that. Okay. Okay. Um, for uh, John and Mary Lou Zabeck, the amount of, of abatement is $176.66. And for Joseph Carey, um, the abatement is $1,199.96. Um, and these were, again, due to errors by the water department reading their, Can I see that one? their amount. Yeah, the yep. I did look at these, but I just want to refresh. <clears throat> so in the water um, meter the readings? Numbers. Yeah, in the water yeah. Meter, meter readings, they misread okay. the numbers, so it looked like they used a whole lot more than they did, <coughs> and they found the error and notified them. And, uh, I'm not so. certain if it was a reading or the meter the, or maybe the, the meter, meter was, needed replacing, and that's what caused the reading. Uh, I'm not sure. For Zabeck, it was um, an error reading it, okay. and the Healy one, or there was a couple in there that. There's two others. Oh, second. That's okay. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. The others, um, I just wanted to do a little more research on yeah. for. Um, in the sign pile. Yes, and then uh, so one is for Ralph Healy, and um, he has quite a bit of data attached here in a letter, um, and it looks like there was a huge spike in his usage. Um, so I just didn't haven't had time to go through this yet and look at it. So I just wanted to do that. So why don't we um, take those two under advisement? Under advisement. Now, yeah. good? And this one just came in, so. Okay. All right. They have a letter that I just read, but I'd like to, again. Well, just put them on the agenda for next time. Yep. Sure. Sounds thank you. Good. Trevor, I appreciate you doing sure. that. Sure. Yep. Thank you. I think it looked at it, too, so. It, um, Great. It's, you. it's just really important to yep. investigate them. Yep. Yeah. I get it. So Absolutely. thank you. Okay. The next thing is an appointment. Um, Christina Johnson to the South County Senior Center's director. So I'd like to, can I make that motion? Sure. So I'd like to um, appoint Christina Johnson, South County Senior Center Director, um, Grade 4, uh, Step 1, uh, 21, 22 an hour. I'll second that. Any further discussion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 We're when really excited to have her, I think. So uh, just while we're in the middle of this, I just wanted to make a, uh, an announcement that we're having a board, um, board of oversight meeting on January um, <laughs> July 11th um, to welcome her and I think she's going to start a little before that she's having her physical done and I thought she was starting today actually uh, I know she had to have a physical done and I mean the days are flying right. for me she so gonna, that could be she was going to come by today yeah you know and I asked her because they were very anxious for her to come in so she didn't have the full week available and I said can, right you know, if I you know Friday, stop by that yeah, would be great so. she's out tomorrow but yeah, yeah. so it, next week is kind of when we're Getting going, but there, um, but we'll have a, a board of oversight meeting on the 11th um, what time to do is a couple that? of things at 4:30. Okay. And I posted that today, so, so do you or want Pat me to, did for me. Thank you. Do you want me to announce um, heat wave bingo is, <laughs> is going to be uh, is going to be played? So um, <laughs> when we have be, a heat wave, we're going to yeah, we're going to have heat wave bingo. So the select board is is going to sponsor the first. <laughs> I, I'm, I admit, I mean, I volunteered us. <laughs> to, I was going to get a jar of honey, us to do what? but it wasn't the right <laughs> you honey. You don't have to do anything, Kip. You're good. Okay. You've got to come in and read the balls, the little numbers. <laughs> oh, Should I do it remotely? Because yes. I'm not going to be around. All right. <laughs> All right. So I'll go. Can you tell me what you're talking oh, about? Oh, so um, <laughs> you, uh, uh, Carolyn was, and you want to do it or you want me to tell him? Oh, well, I've been concerned about the heat wave. And heat waves and having some kind of protocol For and making station. sure if we have a cooling center, we open a cooling center that people actually come. So um, talking to Sue Corey today and Meg, we've decided that, hey, heat wave bingo is going to happen. And that way you can cool down and 
Yes. Have fun. These are when, when there is a heat wave and we have to open a cooling center that would have a little fun. Oh, so, a little anyway, raffle. it's coming yes. the coming to the senior center closest to you is heat wave bingo. So, well, if you really want to get people there, offer a thousand dollar prize. And well, there you go. Well, we'll take your Kim, donation. Oh, Kim, we're taking You're donation so because I already said we're going to donate for the first prizes. <laughs> so, oh. okay, we already finished that one. Let's Next one on, on. <laughs> Abigail Candy uh, to the South County EMS. <laughs> EMT basic, uh, grade two, step one, fifteen ninety one per hour. Second. Second. Oh, well, I sorry. Was gonna, when we continue on with yes. sure. and, yep. and Joshua Coates, South County EMS, uh, paramedic, grade four, step two at twenty two forty an hour. Second. Okay. I'm fine. Okay. Yep. Any further discussion? No. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Welcome aboard. Great. Yes. The next one is Eric Brown for the Sewer Study Committee. Second. Oh, sec okay. You're faster than me. Anybody right. going to volunteer? No. <laughs> no further discussion. All those in favor? Welcome. Aye. 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 Thank you, yes, Eric. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you so um, much, Eric. Uh, by the way, you have to appoint me as Board of Health um, for this year. Oh, why? Because. Oh, Board of what? Health of what? Because I was just reelected, so I'm, you have, the Board has to vote me for on the Board of Health. Oh, I make a motion to appoint Carolyn Shores Ness to be on the Board of Health. I'll second the motion. Wait a minute. What? Well, you're going off my scrap. What, <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. I was reelected and we have not reappointed me to, as Board of Health. Oh, oh, as I you were reelected to the, yes. yes. So when you're appointed yes, to Board of Health. Every time yes. you're up for election, you're I, know, yeah, I thought it was just, I, I thought think you just found out like two weeks later, like, hey, guess what, you're Board of Health too. How did that happen? <laughs> happened to me. <laughs> what happened, really, how did that happen two years ago when neither one of us were there? You, you, I think it comes with the job. Yeah. It comes with the job. No, you have to be separately appointed. Well, who appointed us? Just you? <laughs> when you were here, well, I mean, yeah, every, we every year together. we were well, but then we, we appointed you together. Let's go along with it, Kip, for every vote we've taken. Yeah, so okay. So all I know is that my term has been expire, is okay. expired, Daniel. and I need to be reappointed well, now for you're another official. three, so three it's years. An for three years. It's an well, it's perhaps an for we three should, years. should we appoint the, all of you just yes, to why get don't that we? straightened out, oh. if that's what um, we need okay, to do. So, well, let's just do mine first, because I know mine is we expired. Just did it okay, not. all right. We're good. But I didn't vote yes. Well, you can't. <laughs> okay. You've got to abstain. Yes, can. We've got two votes here. Okay. We override you. So, Kip has one year left. Yes. Yes. Okay. So you would be appointed. I make a motion. We appoint Kip till 2000, um, June 30th, 2019. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Then. Trevor, yours is 220. Yep. No, wait. Yes, that's I'm just right. putting yeah. a, run, right. a term to run concurrently with your select board Thank term. You. Yes, yes, it is. Yes, well, but you have to make the motion. 30th, I make the so. motion, motion for June 30th, 2020. I'll second the motion. Thank you. All, All those right. in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, we're doing them as of June 30th because nobody oh. did them as. Okay. I think next year is May 6th. And I have a question. I know, I know other boards have done this where they've had the chair was different for, you know, if they had multiple, like in Wilbraham, I think, they had another select board member chair the, the Board of Health part of their job. But I, I don't know if you've ever done I've that I've been here. chair since for Forever the last. So you have been. I have been chair since. But at a time when you were not select board chair? Yes, yes. So they have divided it. Yes, because it's a okay. separate board and no one really wanted to be chair. I think Kip really wants to do it. Do you want to really, you want to do it? You can do it. <laughs> Just. Fine, what do you have to do? Well, so we do it, we do it all together here anyway, so. Yeah, but I'm going to go to MAPCO meetings and. That's I'm okay, so confused you can go there. Okay. So. She knew no, what to it, say. It, yeah. no, usually people. I went, I went to a, that meeting with you once. Yes, at, you did. Was it that country did. club in Greenfield? Yep. Yes. Yep. That was, had one on, uh, that we just had our annual meeting. That was, that was. We meet month, you this third one. Monday. This was good. That was an experience. They had a really is. good speaker. Um, just I'll take a couple seconds that um, he does a lot of, he was a, I, I'm drawing a blank on his name. It was like Kevin Anderson or something like that. I, I, I don't know his name, but he works for the UMass. He was their fire chief in Heath for many years and he, tackled the, the ice storm. He went and over the ice storm. He went over all that and the, and the um, you know, the, 
how you handle all the volunteers, how you handle the National Guard when they come in, how you deal with the debris, all that stuff. But what really, he was a very funny man, but what he, what his business is now is Chainsaw Safety. And he did a course uh, for the South Deerfield, Deerfield Fire. Fire District. And, um, South Deerfield Fire District. South Deerfield Fire District. And uh, he, just amazing. He really, it's amazing how, I mean, he, and he used a chainsaw for years, his whole life, and then he didn't realize all the safety steps and all the different things that you can learn from that. So um, that was, it was when pretty When you have impressive. an ice storm and you have so many downed trees. They're all kind um, of sprung. Yeah, um, there it, it's it's a nightmare, and so it is. This chainsaw safety is really important, and I know um, the South Deerfield Fire Department did just do that program. But um, I think one of the things that we should talk about is maybe sponsoring him for DPWs, mm -hmm. um, local, local DP, D DPWs, yeah. so we can all split the costs. Because I I I, Kevin I really was think up for that because he missed. Yeah. I think he missed that other meeting when and when I talked to him the other night. He said he was excited to you know, work with him again. And yeah. Well, I think, I think it's definitely worth it because you expect you people injured. to go out and um, clear the roads, but honestly, um, it's dangerous. It's very dangerous with the, the way the trees fall on the ice storms. It, it sets right. it up. Next on our agenda for new business is an MOU with the Franklin County Regional Solid Waste District for sludge hauling and disposal. Um, well, there were more appointments. Um, nope. the, no, there isn't. The FERCOG oh, appointments. Yeah, you oh. said to use the agenda, use. not the. Oh, annotated. sorry. Yes. You see is the notes more? on your annotated. Um, yeah. What does it say? So I, 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 don't mind, oh. um, I don't mind. I don't mind being uh, the Franklin Ca Regional Council of Governments. <laughs> Where is the um, <laughs> notes on your, an on your annotated agenda? So you use your no, not no. annotated. Me, right. <laughs> right here. The right did here. you? Did they get the right regular now. agenda? I yeah. I got it. He doesn't have it. Yeah, I gave it to you. The first thing I gave it to you. I have it now. Okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. okay. We're going to put that on hold for a moment. Continue on with Just the appointments. I, I'm, I'm <laughs> it's, um, I make a motion we do um, John Pachork Sr. and Jeff Upton for the sewer committee as well. Uh, okay. Where's, oh, All right. So we have Eric Brown. I see. Yep, Jeff Upton. I see. Okay. Second. Uh, any further discussion? No. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the FERCOG Council Representative and Alternate Cooperative Public Health Services. Well, that's, um, or is that? They're, um, well, the, the FERCOG. The rep and the alternate, stop there and then, yeah. Okay, and then the FERCOG ahead. Council, I don't mind continuing on with that as long as Wendy is the alternate because um, sometimes our SCEMS meetings are scheduled at the same time. So it's important to have an alternate. So are you willing to be an alternate well, again? You had said you might be interested. To you me. speaking to me? Yeah, I am talking to you. Sorry. Um, I would be at the same meeting. Um, this is the council that John O'Rourke chairs. That yeah. Okay. Um, that wouldn't work because if you're there, I'm going to be there. So if you miss it, I'd miss it. You know what I'm saying? No, so, but if you yeah. want to do it, then and uh, Wendy is willing to be the alternate. But uh, what I'm saying is if you, if if you're going to be at a skims meeting, I'm going to be at the skims meeting. Oh, do you right. want to be the representative? Do you, do you, do you want, want to be the representative? Do you want to be the main guy? Instead of Carolyn, is what she's saying. Uh, Sorry. Sure. Okay. I make a no, mo motion. And then to, I'll go. Okay. <laughs> I make a motion to appoint Kip as the, our FERCOG um, representative and Wendy as all our alternate. Second. It's the it's, uh, um, But this is just. Fourth fourth Thursday of the month. But no, this is just for the FERCOG, a council representative for the Cooperative Public Health Service. No, not for the no, whole, no, 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 oh, this no. is the There's council. One for the whole, con okay, great. All right, I just want to make sure I understood. It's like the select board of the FERCOG. It's the council, it's the big if council. I get it. Nope, no, nope, nope, that's okay, okay. I, I, I get it. Okay, I think you would really get a lot out of it, Kip. It's really important to go. Right. And, and, you know, you talk about a lot of mm -hmm. other issues. And hmm. You okay. know, regional issues. Sure. It's, it's like when we, um, you know, we talk about the pipeline. Yep. Talking yeah. about, you know, um, uh, the wood, you know, the uh, wood burning. Uh, uh, fire fire yep. Yep. You know, stuff like that. Sure. Uh, representative and alternate Board of Health appointments. 
that the is cooperative, here. Uh, cooperative that public health service, is that what you're talking about? I don't know. That's the one that we, um, that you, that you were our representative before. I was? Mm-hmm. Where was that? Yeah, where was I? Uh, what was, oh, I, I think Jack is on the planning board. That was the one we were trying to figure out which Jack um, Pachorek was on. And I think he's on the regional planning board, Brad. I'm not sure. What is no, the uh, public the health oh, John, service John representative? John Baronis is, because he's through the planning board, and he's on that the, the council's planning committee. Regional planning board. Yeah. And so who, because you would ask me yesterday, what what has Jack Pachorek been? He's still going to something. He's, he's like an at-large member. He doesn't uh, represent us, oh, but he goes, okay. I mean, obviously. We go, I, I, we, we go to and which, sit together. Which right, board? So. The council. Okay. So. I thought they had to be elected, elected on the ballot. He, he was. was. Okay. He was. Okay. All right. I got too many to say. So okay. What, who, uh, can we get back to that question of the Cooperative Public Health Service representative? Yep. What is that and who, where is That's, that? Um, uh, that's over, oversight on Lisa's. It's the over, it's Lisa is part of, Lisa White, our health, public mm -hmm. health nurse, is part of the board. And, and this, is a, this is also a FERCOG thing? Yes. 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 And, that's and who was doing that last time? Kip. No, I, I did a poor job because I don't think I ever did it. I never. I you never went knew. to a few meetings. Yeah, I might have. I thought you and Dick were doing this. No. All right. uh, neither one of one, us three, wanted six. to continue. All right. Well, you can put my name down there. I'm I make a motion to approve Kip. To the I second that. A quick as the bunny. Representative alternative. <laughs> <laughs> Thank okay. you for doing that. Regional Emergency Planning Committee. I usually go to that um, as the uh, chair of uh, Mohawk Area Public Health Coalition. So. Make a motion um, to approve Carolyn Ness to the Regional Emergency I can Planning act as Committee. I'll second that too. motion. All those in favor, aye. 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 If we have to, um, an emergency response coordinator in EMD. Is that what's, what's an EMD? EMD. An we've got that all set. That's Lori Lankowski. Who's we the just EMD. we already okay. voted that. Oh, we okay. did. So that's done. But it's the other. Right. I don't know who fills the other position. What other position? Um, Emerg Emerg oh, emergency, emergency response, response coordinator. coordinator. Who, who, who is that, Carolyn? I, I don't know. These are all requests from FERCOG. Yeah, but filling who, them out as you, you make your decision. Emergency to. response. I don't know who the Which emergency. Are, would that be? Would that be um, Zach or, or Chief? Or is that something it would that be, we would? It do? would probably be one of them. Yeah. yeah. I don't if understand um, why they want emergency response person. Yeah, to what? Dif different they got a planning different committee. Than the emergency management director, it seems to Yes, it's an addition to. Yeah, it's just a, it's just the planning committee for emergency Maybe response EMD coordinator. Yeah. No, the EMD has one place, well, and then okay. then that's a different. Oh, I gotcha. Yep. I'm not going to mention my name, but I mean, if so is this? I, I would think it would be more Zach or Chief. Right? Why, don't, why don't we? Why don't we find out about that? Yeah, because I don't know. Um, Where's the cover letter? I think that is really weird because yeah. usually. Um, I mean, Kevin and I both go. Kevin, Kev, I mean, because I asked Kevin to start going. Mm -hmm. um, well, here's the letter. It so, doesn't say much, so, but here's so the cover could, letter. From we them. could. I thought they were in their pants. We could <laughs> name Kevin. <laughs> okay. Poor Kevin. Well, why don't we wait a week? Yeah. We'll wait I mean, a week and find out what it is. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Talk to the other people from so, Okay, yeah. so we okay. want to appoint. Um, Wayne. I also asked Zach to go more, and um, so Zach goes. Um, sometimes too, because there's not very many EMS people that go. Yeah. So why don't we find out maybe, um, maybe, uh, maybe Kevin and, and Zach could split that. Okay. All set? Yeah. Uh, then okay, I'd like to appoint notes. Wayne Shaw as our wiring ex inspector. Second. 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 Oh, sorry. No, Just that's okay. Yeah. Already yeah. automatic. Uh, no further discussion. All no. those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. What was that? I'm sorry. Wayne. Wayne. That was Wayne Shaw for the wiring. Five dollars an hour. FY19. And you and and Carolyn is the um, 
REPPS, the Public Health Service? No, KIPP, no, is, KIPP is. is. I'm the REPC rep. You're REPC. Yeah, because I already go. Under that REPC thing, though, I mean, I have asked both Kevin and Zach to go, so oh, okay. maybe they could split that other position that they look at. Mm -hmm. Okay, and new business here. The MOU for the Franklin County Regional Solid Waste District for sludge hauling and disposal. Um, I, I will um, make a motion to approve that. Do we second have, and I'll, do I'll. we have any? Okay, I'll second. Any further discussion on that? Yes. We have some. You're going to send it to the lawyer, right? Um, I don't think so. I think it's a contract that you've had every year. But we've had quite a, I, uh, this is kind of last minute. Um, as you know, our, the sludge costs have gone up over the years. Um, and we, they, the contract, uh, at least for the last few years, I think has had two providers. One of them, it's only, there was only one who was willing to bid this year. Unfortunately, um, our operator's experience has not been a positive one with the current, uh, but we have no choice. We have to go out to bid for this service, um, and um, we don't have a contract ready, and this takes effect July 1st. So um, I don't think we have a choice right now in what we can do. We can't spend thousands of dollars on an unbid contract or a non-contract, so we need to do this now. My, my understanding from Janamine is that we're the only ones that have problems. So I, I'm Well, I'm let's get to the bottom of that, this, yeah. and we'll figure that we out. Are. I know you're working on that. <laughs> I but I also, you know, reading an article that was in some sort of publication, the steps that our plant is undertaking right now has reduced our costs for and the amount of solid waste we're getting rid of. So that's helpful. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, so, okay. I so I make that, a motion I to yeah. make a motion to approve the um, memorandum of understanding between Franklin County Solid Waste Management District and the town of Deerfield regarding hauling and disposal of sludge for um, July 1st, 2018 through June 30th, 2019. Second. Any more discussion? Nope. Nope. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Selectman's comments. You got a few? I guess at the your last meeting you talked about this is, do oh, I'm sorry. Dollar General, did you want to talk and make comments um, yeah. for the planning board? I thought that's what you were talking nope. about. No, I was just going to make a couple of comments real quick. Um, oh. Something else. Yeah. Dollar General. Okay. Yeah, not yet. Um, so I just, a couple of things I wanted to hit on real quick was, um, I just wanted to thank all the residents that came out to support and build our town float for oh, Sunderland's so 300th yeah. anniversary. Um, I that was an was amazing good. time. It was really yeah, fun. And, um, yeah. it was hot, <laughs> but we made it through a whole case and of our, water. Our float and was wonderful. It was wonderful. There's a, you can See go that. on. FCAT and watch it and um, I have yet to see the whole parade I want to watch that on FCAT so it was a really great time Sunderland did a great job you know celebrating their town and um, so many people came out it was a beautiful day so that was really fun and um, I just wanted to thank all the people who got together to make that happen and especially thank Jay Savage for donating his time and his truck I mean that was really huge to be able to do yeah. that he brought it down here Friday night we decorated it you know and then Saturday morning and then <laughs> took it over and he sat with us all day as we went through that oh, thing man. so we yeah, had a lot of fun and he was great and I, I can't thank him enough for that so um, I actually have had a lot of positive comments. Yeah. Like people were really happy that we did it. It was great. It was, it was really great um, to celebrate them. Um, and then also that Sunderland did a great job with fireworks that night. I mean, they had, they had stuff all weekend, but it was, it was really fun to celebrate with them. So that was, that was great. Um, I, I did mention already that the, the um, Board of Oversight for our Senior Center is meeting on the 11th at 430. Um, I did see a comment about Tritown Beach. I just wanted to make a, a, an announcement that Tritown Beach is open and is open until, um, I want to say it's August 19th, and it's $35 for a family. I guess you get a sticker on your car and however many people you can pack in your car legally can uh, come in. And uh, seniors, it's $10 for the season. I think Sunderland is $50. Um, so um, go and enjoy the beach. So I just want to make that. And we have that data up on our website now. It's current. So 
Um, I haven't spoken with her recently, but last time I heard from Beth Foley that they were not able to, their, their usual swim instructor was not able to do that program. Have you heard? I have say? not. I haven't heard anything about so the swim last program. Last I knew they itself. were not running one this summer. Okay. Unless oh, somebody really? has updated oh. information. I don't if know. If you're listening and you have updated information, please yeah, let, us let us know. Yeah, let us know. We'll put it on the website. Oh, most of yeah. the kids in the town have learned to swim. Yep. Not swim Good. Program. Then we don't. <laughs> yeah, they're all no, done. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, ways. it's a real, it's a real service. I, can, I mean, I feel like that's a life skill. I mean, yeah, you never great. know when that could save your life. Save your life. They mm -hmm. were trying real hard. They pulled out all the stops trying to find somebody. So mm. two other items real quick. Um, I just wanted to um, congratulate Darius Modesto, who was... Um, we uh, signed his contract last night, and he is now our interim uh, superintendent for Frontier and Union 38. And we're really excited to have him and um, excited for a new year and a lot of good changes. And he's got good energy, and it's, go it's going to be a good year. So I'm really excited um, for him, and I wanted to welcome him to our community. Um, and then um, uh, we have a Franklin County S a Select Board Association meeting tomorrow night up at... Um, Mohawk um, Park uh, to talk about regionalization. Yeah, can I just say yeah, something? Please. Last I knew, um, the uh, COG representatives who are going to be there are were going to uh, put my name forward to be the representative to the Transportation Planning Organization, TPO. Oh, you know what? Um, I'll bring it up so we can vote it. Okay. I don't have to be the one, but we need representation. Yes. This person who um, has been representing hasn't been to any meetings. So oh, okay. I said I would do it. They asked me a year ago, and I yeah. said, uh, but um, I am willing. So okay. unless there's someone else, uh, that would be fine. Yeah. But um, we well, need representation. Jonathan is our representative, but okay. he doesn't go. So okay. we'll bring it up yeah. that we need to vote Wendy. And Yep. And, and I actually I spoke with him, and he said that would be fine. He, they have day meetings, and they you know it doesn't work. Yep. Right. They don't um, meet that regularly. You know regularly. what? We can we can bring it up, Wendy, because um, I'm the representative for um, Shelman Control Oversight, and um, geez, now I can't even think what Ellis. I'm, I have a couple positions that they have to vote me. So, or if somebody else wants the to, the select do it, boards it's fine association too. does. Yeah. Okay. So we can bring it up, so it doesn't look. Yeah. Good. We'll do offensive. that. Would you yep. also mention that they don't have an East County representative either? They, I, yeah. when I was in Orange, I had asked a couple of years ago to be appointed. There's not been anybody appointed from the eastern part of the county for, I, I think at least a couple, maybe a year or yeah. well over a year. I'll, so. I'll, I'll mention that too. That's why you get bridges in Monroe Bridge. <laughs> I know. <laughs> hey, I was on there, and that's how we got the Stillwater Bridge picked up by the state. Yep. I mean, there's no, you go and you, there's no question, you vote right. stuff. Yep. So thank you, Wendy, for being able to yeah, go. I mean, it's one great. of those really pain yeah. in the next meetings, but honestly, it's really worth it because that's how we get stuff done. Thank okay. you, Wendy. That's how we got River Road. <laughs> yep. We got Mass Works on that. Great. Yep. Okay. Um, and that's all I have for uh, thanks. My, uh, I just wanted to give the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Action Grant update. Wendy um, very nicely went to the meeting in Holyoke, and we fi figured out how to update our plan. Katie, that's head of it, was so nice. It's such a new program. She said all we have to do is have our steering committee meeting. So we scheduled a steering committee meeting on July 10th at 1 o'clock here in the town hall. So anybody interested can come. What we're going to do is update our plan to include um, Kelleher Drive and um, maybe talk about, you know, I mean, I guess at a later date we could do the well, actually, it's, it's a core group meeting, so it isn't really, I mean, it, all meetings, I suppose, are public, although this is, no, it's we need to make sure we try to get our, our, the core group there. Um, I have a commitment from Kevin and John. And, um, oh, great. Already. Okay. So, I, I mean, they know it's really important to get this done, so... As long as you and Chris show up. Yeah, Chris and I have in, in yeah. communications. Okay. Um, also, um, I, I found out from the state uh, EEOA that um, they did approve the pre-proposal from the conservation district for the Stillwater Bridge area. Um, that was where we we're going to have like public outreach and f try to figure out how we can work. I had put in a proposal for um, the Eunice Williams Bridge area in Greenfield in Sunburn Beach up in um, Shelburne, which has problems similar to Stillwater Bridge area. 
So I, what I wanted from you all was just to think in the next few days, what would you like the outcome to be? I mean, my, my thought is we do policing, we have cleanup issues, we're, it's costing us money, we need to figure out, instead of just closing it down, we need to have some kind of public closing outreach. Stillwater. Stillwater Bridge area. Oh, you mean to the public? Allowed? Can we do that? We can keep closing it down, and you keep doing policing. But the problem is that's not really the solution, that's and it causes good. everybody aggravation. So my thought was to have some kind of public meeting, facilitated by stuff for in in, this, three, in the three different areas, so that people could come and say. Is this you know, to come up with a management plan? Kind well, of to come their... up with some ideas on mm -hmm. how we can make this more accessible but less problematic. No, co you know, try to cut our costs to the town because it costs us money yep. to send police up there, to send people up there to clean it up. Um, and then also, there's heavy traffic on natural river banks. So the idea maybe is we could get someone to come and how do we reinforce or protect the riverbank that's there um, in a better manner uh, because there's just too many people using a natural riverbank. It was never meant for that. So I was just hoping that you all would think about this for a few. It's not due until July 19th, but I got to obviously I have some ideas, but it would be nice to talk about yeah. it and try to come up with who is EEOA? What we, um, Envir uh, Executive, executive Office of Energy and um, Environmental. Environmental. Yeah, what's the it's A? It's all your affairs. Department of Ag. Oh. It's okay. all your uh, all right. DEP. Okay. It's it's the over branch of all, everybody. Okay. It's the outdoor agency. Okay. DCR. Everybody. Right. And what grant program is this? Um, this is under the Environmental Bond Bill. Okay. Hmm. But it's, it's like leftover money. Okay. Um, and Montague it's, it's, was interested. They contacted us. Yes, Montague. <laughs> Theirs is a separate thing because theirs is actually tied up with, um, when I talked to Steve Ellis, theirs is same issue, too much traffic on yeah. an unimproved bank, but first light in the relicensing process, they are required by the license to keep maintain it. So he want, his interest is to how to force first light to do Where it. Where is this for them? Uh, right by the canal. Oh. And um, so... I told him that was not that was different than, you know, our, our situation. Issue. Yeah. And I and so I just gave him some ideas and hooked him up with um, John Bennett up at Wyndham, who used who is an expert on the first light licensing and and how you could. When when I was here, as the interim a few years ago, I somehow I recall we had a lot of problems that particular time. We had that kayaking group or kind oh, of. Yeah. We tubing, the tubing. But I tubing thought you had successfully worked with the power company there to have some signage and... Well, we did, we did some stuff, but the problem is it's not really solved, and, and we're actually having increased use again. You know, there's a huge People spike. People love that spot. It's, it's a popular spot. There are not that many p places for access, and people... I mean, it's advertised on the state. And you go on the websites, they talk about the Deerfield River, and it's one of the listed sites for access. Well, guess there what? There is no access. There's not really good access. And so the idea is to have, you know, we need to tell the state. Take it off the list. Right. right. Well, the idea is to, for us to come up with some ideas that would, would be the next step we would apply to the state to, to do them so that would take the burden off of us and would improve access. And so, but the, the burden to us from listening to you right now is that we have to pay someone to clean the area occasionally, and that we get calls for the police department to go there. And EMS. EMS, fire department, rescue, all, all kinds of we stuff. We get calls. We get drunk. And, but also, here, but also we're going to get a lot of calls from neighbors last time. Yeah, and and also we get, we're going to get eventually because they're they're taking water samples of the Deerfield River, so. At, at some point, we're going to be required to do something about the erosion because it affects water quality. And I, I don't want to get nailed for that as a town. So part of this is you're documenting that we have a problem with the state, and we're asking the state to do something. Okay. But we need to come up with what do we want the state to do. Right. 
and we also need to document it better than we have in, in the past. And um, I mean, I've obviously been documenting it over the years, but we need to do more. So I just want you to think about okay. what, what, would, what would your outcome be? If, if we get this grant for 35000 what do we want to accomplish from it? All right, we'll work on that. And the idea is okay. to set well, us up for another grant to yeah. do and something. And who's applying right. and to who? It's a conservation district that's applying. Is, okay. Yeah. I just want to get that on the, the record. For you. <laughs> no, it's a conservation district because, you know, how you, you do better with regional. Yeah. So yeah. I just threw it out there and they said yes. I'm happy to talk to you about it. By yeah, way. okay. okay. Yeah. Next item. Huh. Um, the next item is, um, uh, this is 15 years for... Um, the uh, August 27th um, is 15 years this year. 2003 was when Greg Blanger was killed. And I just think it would be really nice if we did like a dedication or something. Yeah, I think so too. Hmm. Um, I know it's that bridge will always 15. be remembered as Stillwater Bridge, yeah. but I think um, it's a really special place that Greg used to go a lot. And um, I think it would mean a lot to his mom. Yeah, and, I, um, I do too. And I to the community. Be, yeah. So, and I know every August um, she puts together a fundraiser to help veterans and uh, families. And we thought this might be a good time to, um, yeah, I think you know, it would to dedicate be. that. Sorry, bridge. it's okay. I just, it's like, pretty emotional. I was thinking about it. It's so awful. Yeah, yep. it's hard to believe it's been 15 years. So I don't, not sure what we what we do, how we go about getting a, a plaque and planning that with um, probably with We Ka could Kathy. talk to Kevin, I guess. Um, then, Kevin would be able to figure yeah, out how to I'm hook it up somehow. Right. I'm sure, well, we, yeah, yeah, secure it to the bit, but it's our find bridge, out who so makes it. And, yeah. you know, we, the traff, mm -hmm. the one who made the plaque for our EMS building yeah. maybe could make a yeah. plaque and probably we should talk or with. That bridge is going to be changed here real shortly. We should. Have something that removes. About, yeah, yeah remove make it stuff. removed yeah. and go back on whenever they're done yeah. Yeah, working yeah. on it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, so we can think about, you know, yeah. a plaque and maybe whatever goes around it. Who took care of the MS it. building plaque? Who did yeah. that? They were down in uh, Holy <coughs> right? It was the Din, <coughs> Din, Din Brothers. Din, Din, Din Brothers. Who made sure it got uh, done? Zach. 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 Okay. Yep, Zach got it done. What's um, the PVMD? Uh, oh, Pioneer Valley right. Mosquito <laughs> District. Um, we had our first meeting on June 22nd. Yep. Um, organized. I'm um, made it through the system, and I am now officially a commissioner. And um, Katie Brown, our state vet, was just fabulous. She pooled together a lot of um, ending uh, end of the year grant money for from the CDC, and um, gave us a hundred thousand dollars. We had to spend it before uh, Friday. But um, we took our list from the original grant that um, Wendy put together that we got for 150000 So we took that equipment list. We um, went over the surplus equipment that other districts are giving us. And then um, is being sent out, the list is being sent out to the other districts to give us some more input. Um, but it looks like we'll be able to spend all $100,000 um, before... Uh, Friday and um, it's it's very exciting because not a dime is of our original hundred and fifty thousand yeah. dollar grant has been spent Good. and in the meantime the state is is um, trapping and testing our mosquitoes for no cost and they Good. started a couple weeks ago we so one hit not here. yeah but it's in Weymouth it's in the, it's in the nope. eastern part but yeah we have it's in Weymouth next on your list um, we're setting up a meeting August 2nd, 2018 at 6 p.m. here in um, the town hall for um, the, the um, Deerfield River flooding um, tabletop exercise that's happening November 3rd. So this is a pre-planning meeting. What time are those meetings? Do you that's know? at 6 o'clock. Oh, okay, good. 6 o'clock on August 2nd. And then um, I just want to thank uh, uh, Karen from the assessor's office and Brenda, uh, our accountant, and Patty Cavanaugh. Um, we've been meeting. We've been trying to sort out this um, potential school finance foundation re reform. Uh, it's about $400,000 that we are going to be penalized. And um, Karen <coughs> has been working 
came up with a brilliant solution. It's been sent out to um, the Department of Education and um, we're hoping that this will solve our foundation um, formula problem. Good. If it doesn't, there's a couple other things that I talked to John Cordaire about and we'll work on that from there. What, okay. what was Karen's Since, idea? I'm, I'm just, well, you oh, can tell me afterwards if you know. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, so there's no one sitting in an audience, so there's no one from the public going to make any comments. Our next meetings are going to be on July 11th, the 25th, August 8th, and then the 22nd and September 5th. Oh, we have one other item before we leave, okay. which is... Um, we need to comment on Dollar General, right? Is that yes. the last thing we yes. had? Yes, as a board. So. Um, or not. I, I we wanted. Do we um, have to do it this week? Or do we still well, have? Well, they're next. They're yeah. next week. They're meeting um, Monday. Their hearing's okay. Monday. Mass, Mass DOT does not have, a, or there is not a current <coughs> driveway permit to that property. So I just want to make sure that Mass DOT is doing um, a real traffic um, assessment, w where would the safest place be for that driveway? Because, um, or the access to five and 10, because I come down, every time I come to the town hall, I come down Mill Village and cross over to North Main Street. And I have to say that that is a really bad intersection. It's dangerous. And I would want to make sure that, that from my experience, um, the, the I've been living there for 36 years, and, and it is a dangerous intersection. Mm -hmm. And, the, and the, the biggest reason that it's dangerous is because when people stop to make turns, people aren't courteous enough to slow down. They just speed around the other side. Mm -hmm. and that's where all those accidents have happened. I don't know if we could, uh, as a town, uh, suggest to the um, state that they remark that area and not allow have more uh, brighter yellow cr hash uh, lines on the side so people won't go across there or maybe even have the state cut uh, like those rumble strips across there just so people realize that you know? especially when people kind of turning well, in and coming oh yeah out I mean I just feel incident. like a s assessment of of the best yeah. Yeah. safest placement sure. of that driveway would occur it seems to be to me right. they need to s evaluate that I mean yeah. rather than have Dollar General tell us where they want their their oh, no 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 they don't well it's yeah. I don't it's even like Cumberland Farms. I mean, it, it's never, it. the state always tells you what mm -hmm. you're going to do. You know, you oh, can okay. always suggest things, but well, the state always looks at any of their curb cuts and they scrutinize it. And they, if they don't like a particular curb cut that you might want, they'll say, well, we're not going to approve that. You need to move it 200 feet this way, or you have to do this, or whatever. Well, I just want a be. real assessment sure. of, of the um, safest yeah. access. Yeah. So uh, my comments are, uh, I'm not a fan of the business going in. I just, I don't feel it fits our uh, community. Um, I, I don't really have much to say about that because zoning laws are what they are. And if they make it through their other boards that they need to, um, I don't really have a way to change that. But I, um, I think we have good uh, family owned businesses here that can keep the money local. Um, so I'm not a fan of, of having a, a store like that. I'm not, um, I also don't like the shape and look of the building. I have seen others, and uh, you mentioned one at the Cape and maybe another one somewhere else that was much more attractive for our community. And I think, I'm not sure why they're set on a cinder block building like that, but I think if you could make it more like the one that we saw in that picture or another area, I think it would fit in a whole lot better to our community, regardless of what they have for sale in it. Um, and um, so, so mainly it's the look of the building. Um, you know, again, I don't think it fits our community, but that's up to somebody else to decide. Um, and I'm very concerned about the traffic um, there. So if they can be a study and, uh, you know, I know we have a ton of traffic that goes in Yankee yep. Candle every year. We have a lot goes, you know, it'll be going into the Cumberland Farms. and. Yep. But as long as it's studied and in any way we can make that intersection safer, um, um, I want to advocate for. Um, and uh, I, I am concerned about, you know, lights being on the whole hours of the night, in, mainly because it's in a residential area. Yep, you know, if it's, you know, Cumberland Farms is also going to have their lights on until, I don't know if they're 24-7 or if they're going to close too, or a lot of them are open late nowadays, but, um, or like the Circle K. But that's, you know, right 
it's right in a residential area, so it just doesn't fit there. And I really wish somebody else had, had purchased the land and we're going to put something else there. So that's all. Those are my comments. I'm going to, I'm going to try to be a little brief about it because I am on the planning board and I'm going to keep an open mind. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've never, until two weeks ago, I was never in one of those stores. And uh, I went in and uh, looked around and saw what, what they had in this store. And my only comment as a selectman is that I might not be a fan of that business, mm -hmm. but I look at it from, from my own personal point of view is that they have a lot of things that people in this town will buy. And even though I might not like that business, I'd rather see the people drive a mile or two there than go all the way to Northampton because we're all talking about global warming and our carbon footprint. And my wife and a lot of people I know are very guilty of, well, I'll go down here and I'll go there. And they're driving all over the place, burning up you know, thousands. And you know, this town alone probably burns a half a million gallons of gasoline running around for stuff. So having something close that people can pick up is, I think, is a plus. But anyways. They're all, there are a lot of important issues, and I'm yeah, sure that the planning hope, board will, I hope they do. you know, they're going to go through a lot. Uh, there's, you know, they've got their engineers. The planning board is going to hire their uh, peer reviewers, and, you know, everything will be done, um, you know, right. I just, just looking at the layout, I was concerned about the parking. It didn't seem like there would be enough parking for the building well, that size. The only on the, thing I on can say about that is that, you know, there was some discussion about getting a reduction in the required number of parking spaces. And that came about because of the neighbor's concerns. You know, the, the, the people who are, are putting this uh, proposal forward are prepared to put in the required amount of uh, parking spaces. But the abutters said, hey, could you eliminate this? And they said, sure, we, would, you know, we don't mind. They don't expect it's going to be a place like Yankee Candle. They're not, you know, you're not going to have 50 cars there at a time. Um, so I think that they seem to be quite willing to work with the community. They've had some reach, uh, outreach to the neighbors. Uh, they agreed to put fences uh, where the neighbors would like to see them. I, I think, I personally think that the fences are going to be more of a distraction. Mm. But, you know, if that's what the neighbors like and, and these people are willing to work with them. Is there any... Um have you had any contact with them to find out or if there's anybody in the board talking about a different design of building? We, I have. I, I spoke with them uh, not, as a, not as a board member, but right. after a meeting, I, I said to them that I've seen these other stores and I actually visited one of them yeah. and I talked with them. And w what's happening here is the, the people that are coming forward with this are real estate developers. It's not Dollar General. These people build stores and buildings all over New England and they look for tenants and in this particular case their tenant is Dollar General. So when I asked about the, case, the stores that I saw that were different, they don't own those particular ones um, and, and they said that they would be willing to look into it but they don't have plans for that, that's not something that they do. But it's not that hard. It, well, it, you know, it's it's th these these companies buy pre pack, and I I understand. I mean, I understand where you're coming from, but they buy these prepackaged buildings that yeah. come in, and so much. So they're, you know, they haven't looked into this, but they said they would. I hope they but, do. I hope I they do because I really think yeah. it would fit our our community a lot better than yeah. than that. But so I'm trying to reduce <coughs> your comments as a board. Okay. Yeah. Into <laughs> some kind of consensus. The the the. Uh, the one clear thing was um, traffic study. A yeah. robust, I'm going to say a robust traffic study. Yep. And we know what they went through with Cumberland Farms. Yeah, we sure. spent a whole day, many parties yep. involved with that. But is there um, the other thing, I think, uh, what we were just saying, um, building design? Or yeah. is that not a I consensus? I don't know if we have the ability. Yeah. I mean, we, we don't I have think the we ability would all by our zoning we can, to, we can make a to do We can make a request. Right. Yeah, we right. make a you know, request. We would like to, to see a, a, a more colonial style type building. Right. Restyled or resized to fit the character of the area? Yes. Yes. <laughs> That'll work. And, and, but, and, not, and you can and reference a, that. But in all fairness, but. I mean, I, I get it, but in all fairness, there's a steel building right across the street. Well, and I wish so, it wasn't. Well, <laughs> well, it was there long before the houses were, I too. Know, so. I know. I, but, you know, so I, I, 
lighting and hours. That we can plan for the, lighting, for the future, lighting, right? So anything new that goes in, we I'm can look sure to the future. Make sure you all agree. Yeah. Well, the, Do you the, want to say that again to so the other two? Lighting people? is a concern. I want to make sure the lighting is... Well, that's is, one thing we're going to address. But in the, the preliminary conversations, all of their lighting is down lighting. It doesn't okay. cast outwards. Good. You know, and they don't use very high poles. The, I think... I'm pretty sure they said their highest pole is 14 feet. Uh, their building is going to be a little higher than 14 feet. And even the lights on their building just shine down. They don't go out. So if you're a neighbor and you look at their building, you'll see the building would be lit up, but you won't see a light. I mean, where I live, if I look at the, my neighbor down there, I see these glowing orange balls, you know, and they, they shine right in my house, and I'm, you know, and 800 I, and feet away. And I just want to verify that the parking request reduced parking was a neighbor's yeah. uh, neighbor's is the, request, is not the boards. Yeah, they don't not, care. Not their is request. Is it the board's request? I'm, I'm trying no. to get, you know. No, I, I'm concerned because if for a building that size, you're supposed to have X number of right. parking, parking spaces, spaces, and it didn't look like they had that many parking spaces. But if it's the neighborhood that is asking for reduced parking spaces, I'm okay with it. But if it's a company <coughs> that wants us to cut back on their parking spaces so they can have yeah, a bigger no. building, I'm oh, not no, no. interested. No, it's not that way. Uh, the building is, uh, the, the footprint of the building is uh, is actually under 10,000 square feet. And and I had, I went back because I, I, I saw that there was a request for the increase. And not that many years ago, you could build up to 10,000 square feet. It was just recent, when I say recently, within the last 10 years, mm. reduced mm. to 4,400. Anyways. It'll be so sure. maybe to get the building size up, then they the trade-off would be that it'd be more attractive. Mm -hmm. yeah. Otherwise, right. no building more than 4,400 square feet. Well, I, I don't, you can't from the zoning thing. You can't you can't do that. I thought you just said that that was changed from well, 10,000. Well, then you have you have to get it was changed from 10,000. It was reduced down to four. But the only thing is that it wasn't a matter of an automatic thing. You had to go for the permit right. for it. Yeah. That's how it's. But, but what I'm saying is then I would like go the, right. the permit. permit process, special permit process to increase their size of the building means that they have incentive to make it more attractive yeah. size building. Okay. Otherwise, no special permit. Right. Mm -hmm. that, I'm, I would can second that? that. I don't know if you can do that. Well, if you can, that's what we'd <laughs> like to know. have happen. I mean, I really, I really do not. I well, really, yes, I mean, my, has I, mean I say this, yeah. I think you've yeah. hit where you, I mean, your sentence hit it. I think that's really what I'm saying. I put restyled or resized to fit the area. Concerns about the building design. Thank you. Um, um, there's okay. just one more thing that we haven't discussed, and I don't know if you need to put it under business not anticipated, but, you know, we had that notice from, um, Roger Sadowski about turning off the fountain in yes. the beginning of July, yep. and well, um, I have not been able to find any grant well, funding for. I, yeah. Can I make a statement that I've heard through the grapevine that Roger has not heard from us that we want him to shut it off. I mean, don't want him to shut it off. He said, "Well, I told him." This is again. This is all rumor, so I have no idea. If Roger's I, listening, I would like to the clarify. Heard, there was a first they heard of it, and they don't support turning it off. Correct. Over. That's oh. what I've understood. The commissioners don't support it. Roger felt like it's the right thing to do. I don't disagree with that, other than, you know, for environmental reasons. But um, I'd like to study that a little bit more and find out. For, I really want to keep it on. Okay. Well, well, I absolutely want to keep so it on. So I, I think I let I have not some, some of you know source. that I'm, I have a potential funding source. And... Um, I am talking, I've been playing phone tag with, um, I think his name is Bill Sullivan, who knows about the fountains in Northampton, both the one in Florence and I think the okay. one in front of Look Park that do recycle. Yep. And so I'm going to work with him and get more information and bring that forward. And I I don't know if it was Diane Gribko that had talked to Chapley's as well as you. Yes. But yeah, we I'll, I'll find um, out more. And you. Well, I was, in. you know, we were, I, I had put up. I thought we could do it for you know six or seven thousand dollars, and then, you know, my every estimate that I had was around ten, right? Around okay. you know, double that. So but I'd like to add my. Yep. I, I keep saying I don't cl claim to be an environmentalist, but we don't have a water shortage. This is my opinion. We don't have a water sh shortage. 
the state, I talked with DEP, they, they, don't, they could care less about it. And I don't consider it a water, a waste, right. because the water it's just flowing. goes down the drain, goes into the river, and through the sunshine, it evaporates, it rains, it fills up, and nature has a way of recycling it. And I, I, well, and where's I, the documentation I that, that they're complaining. So you're supporting this, right? Is I don't think yeah, there is any. Yeah, just let it run. Yeah, okay. You know, so, I mean, okay. And, and I, mean, I just wanted to make sure. Um, you're right, and, and if we if we all of a sudden, you know, a state says we're in a, in a major drought, we need oh, to yeah, conserve and our... Up. Well, it is dry. You, you would shut and it off for and, that and period I, of time. And if we have any pro water problems with the water district in the sense that there could be a potential shortage, sure. I absolutely have no so, problem shutting it off. But right. Having a dead fountain in the right. center of town. Well, let me is ask terrible. Northampton why they do have recycling fountains. If there is a reason, I'll bring that. Well, they have water shortages all the time. May, may right, I just but, state one thing. But I don't know what the other reasons are. Oh. Can we at least formally send a letter to the water commissioners stating that we wish the fountain to be left on at this time, and we're looking at other options? But that way, we have a formal statement from our board that we'd like to keep it going at this time. I second that. Yes. Thank you. I think you already did. But I think okay? we did, but I just, you know, yeah. rumor was that he hadn't heard from us, so I just want to make sure that um, he has heard from us. Well, right. And, and, and I know, Wendy, you were potentially had a source, but I had no source. Right. And it was double the expense that I had you thought. Thinking. So, But it didn't mean that it was not solvable. It just, right. We'll just look at, we'll, yeah, let's just, just re keep, keep re researching. We need to keep working on it. Oh, motion to dissolve. Motion to dissolve. Um, oh. Second. We, we, we don't have to talk about it now, but we had talked about the, uh, the, having like a groundbreaking for um, Dumont. Dumont. Yeah, um, we'll do that. I think we can talk about that at your next sure. meeting. Okay. 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 Very good. All, All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>